What up, tubers? We're back at it again. Another how to with Mr. L. Today's how to is all about using Photoshop to create your own version of a modern day Picasso. I said modern day because Picasso is a throwback. Dude's a master. Can we do what he did? No, because there's only one Picasso. So, as I get started and get ready to roll, hey, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tell a friend. Tell them about it. So, let's dive into Photoshop. So, let me go to my dock. Click on Photoshop, which is already open, uh, so we can start to work. So I'm gonna go File New or Command N if you want to be fancy and use your keyboard shortcut. Both works both ways. So the photo I found in Picasso is landscape, which means the paper's laying down sideways. So I'm gonna switch this to 11 by eight and a half. Pretty simple. And I'll hit OK. So there's my white canvas. Next, I gotta bring in my picture of Picasso. Again, I'm gonna press Command V. Ooh, he tiny, he a tiny Picasso. Oh no, so I'm gonna press Command T. Let's increase the size. I'm gonna hold Option Shift. So when I stretch out the picture, it stretches out equally, evenly, and it's distributed around the page. So it doesn't look bad. Last thing you wanna do is be like, oh, can I, no, no, no. And then it just disproportionately stretches your photo, so it looks a little funny. And the true designer can see that you didn't stretch it out correctly. So I'm gonna hit, a, hit Enter. There's my Picasso going, hey! I'm Picasso! Now, who doesn't love Picasso? The dude is, like I said, a genius. Bananas. So, with that being said, let's get to work, right? It's, this, this treatment that I'm about to show you, it's very simple. We use a, one tool, and then we use a couple keyboard shortcuts to finish off the process. Uh, you know, Photoshop does give me all these additional tools and options to use that I can apply to this portrait. Um, I can go into my filter gallery, pick different types of artistic renderings to give it like brush strokes. I can make it feel like an oil painting, but that I'm showing you that, I'm showing you this, well, so that maybe you might want to try this on your own. So for now, let's keep it simple. Press the letter M. The letter M, if you notice, hooked up, activated my rectangular marquee tool. And this little arrow on the bottom just lets me know that there's different options below us. But we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it rectangular. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag. That right there gave me my dancing ants. Other professionals refer to this as the marching ants. I like to call them dancing because I like dancing. So I got my dancing ants going and I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard. And I'm going to actually create another selection and another selection and another selection all by holding shift now. Created one, held shift to create the others. So let's just create selections all over the place. Keep them random. Who cares where you click and drag? Just click and drag. So, we got the selections going. We'll add a couple more. Because, man, this is Picasso. We're going to create a modern day Picasso using Photoshop. Uh, so, I'm just going to do one more. And I'm going to repeat this process actually throughout this tutorial, throughout this how to. So, Command C, Command V as in Victor. So, if I turn off layer number one, you notice that there's a bunch of little Picassos there. And what Photoshop did was copy and pasted them in, in a sense in place, actually, from where I originally took them from. So what I'm going to do now with layer number two there, I'm going to get my move tool. Or I could have pressed the letter B as in vector on my keyboard to get it going. And I'm going to use my arrows on my keyboard to shift these a little bit. And then things start to trip out a little bit. They start to like, whoa, whoa what just happened? And again, I'm going to repeat the process. I'm press the letter M, get my rectangular marquee active, and again, let's start creating some selections. So there's number one and then shift to add more. If you guys notice as I hold shift, my cursor gets a little plus sign, which means we can add to it. So let's keep adding. Also at times, when I create my selections and, my, and I copy and paste them, I sometimes don't move them drastically because it does create some weirdness. Uh, so sometimes I just keep subtle little moves. Sometimes I make them a little bit more extreme. Uh, if you guys realize some of Picasso's original portraits, some of the cubistic style, um, was pretty extreme, was pretty, pretty move. But then again, it, it was a Picasso, man. This guy, like I said, was a master. So I go with that, create those selections. Command C as in copy, you know, C as in cat. Uh, Command V as in vector, because when we get into the design world, we work with vectors, especially in Illustrator. So you, as you can see already, you know, stuff's moving. So let's repeat the process again. M, let's click and drag with his eyeball. It's always interesting when the eyes move a little bit. And I can make them of all different sizes. I can add to them and create interesting, interesting selections. Get like a three-parter. So 
the other pieces of the finger come out. And again, I create my original, my first selection by clicking on dragging, and then I hold shift so that the cursor gets that plus sign. If I wanted to take away from one of these selections, I'll let go of shift and I'll hold option. And now you see that my cursor has a minus sign, so I can take away from a selection. Pretty simple. So let's go back to holding shift because I want these selections. Let's go here, maybe in here. Take the wristwatch. Take some more of the wristwatch. Maybe this little magazine that could be on the coffee table. I'm not quite sure. Command C again, and then Command V. And I pasted it again. So let me get my move tool. Letter V to activate my move tool again. See, it grayed out. Let's move these guys over a little bit. So as again, as soon as I turn off layer one, we can see that the Picasso has shifted. The pieces are moving. Um, I'll do a command T just to make it different and then I'll rotate it a little bit. And all I gotta do to rotate it is hover over the corner. So that my arrows switch to a side to side look, kind of curve. And then I'll move them a little bit, you know, just throw it off a little bit more, freak people out like, what's going on here? Because like, again, if you ever look at a Picasso and some of his more abstract cubistic pieces, they are pretty. Uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Well, pretty displaced. Pretty out of the ordinary, pretty abstract, but in a Picasso type of way, because nobody could do it like Picasso. Let's attack this background a little bit. And again, this technique is, you know, again, we're only using the rectangular marquee tool, creating selections, nothing out of the ordinary. Let's see. Attack this part right here. Oh, let's move his mouth. It always gets interesting when you move parts of the face. Yeah, if I move the forehead, who knows how much we'll see. So Command C and then Command V. And then letter V to activate my move tool. And let's shift things a little bit. You guys notice everything's moving a little bit out of place as it should. Uh, now if I wanted to, I could keep continue to repeat the process. Um, I can do a command J and clone my layer. So now I have two layer fives. And I can move this one over the opposite direction shift it up and I can do the same thing for all these now um, another thing is saying you know if you know anything about Picasso he went through different periods so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer by clicking on the sticky note right here yes I call it a sticky note because that's what it looks like uh, I have a brand new layer I'm gonna go pick a dark blue or a blue I don't press option delete so that filled up my canvas right I'm gonna double click on my layer so I can get into my layer style and then I'm gonna play with my blend modes right here so I'll click and see which one of these gives it a better feel Ooh. Kind of like a blue period and this is just optional just to well, luminosity did not work like I said this is just optional something for us to take a look at and see maybe 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 I like this maybe I don't maybe I want an overlay a little bit darker uh, ooh, it's a hard light ooh too blue so you know maybe we'll keep it a soft light keep it subtle but there you have it a quick easy way to create a modern Picasso using Photoshop using just a rectangular marquee tool which is one of our selection tools so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure you like subscribe and tell a friend because you know why not if it ain't fun you're not learning and i'm trying to make this learning aspect fun so like i said thank you for watching any questions concerns comments right below see you guys